Hi, welcome to Techverse. I'll show you how you can make a 12 volts 5 ampere switch moon power prime. So the complete schematics for the project are shown. It's powered directly from the mains. So you have a current limiting fuse at the input. You also have this filter section made up of this. It's one rated capacitor whose story is shown. And this common bond deductor choke. So it's followed by a full bridge rectifier to convert the AC into DC. There's a inrush current limiting dummy star. This limits the inrush current when the bulk input capacitor is charging since it can cause the fuse to blow up. So all the windings are shown. First of all, I'll begin with the transformer winding. So the core should be at least 1.5 centimeters squared to realize more than 60 watts. So initially you need to wind 15 turns for the primary winding. The diameter of the wire is 0.7 millimeters. Then you need to wire the 5 turns for the secondary winding. And between these two, you should add 5 layers of the serration tape. So after winding the secondary turns, you put 5 layers of insulation tape. Then make the auxiliary winding 3 turns. Then you can add 3 layers of insulation tape. Then add the remaining 15 turns for the secondary winding. So this will ensure that the secondary and the auxiliary they are sandwiched between the primary windings to enhance coupling. So the way this works is that some current you find its path to the gate of the MOSFET through this high resistance biasing resistor and so the MOSFET will conduct. So this will cause current to ramp up to the primary winding. So more voltage will be induced in the auxiliary winding and so which will find its way to the base of this, to the gate of the MOSFET through this 2 nanofarad capacitor, and the MOSFET will remain completely on until the capacitor completely discharges. So once the current has increased up to the peak amount, it will begin collapsing, and so negative voltage will be induced in the auxiliary winding, which will cause the MOSFET to completely shut down. So all the energy stored in the core is transferred to the secondary, where it is rectified by this high frequency diode which should be written at least 100 volts and 8 amperes so it's then filtered by this power capacitor and this minimum load ensures that the output remains steady so for feedback you will have this optocopra you can use the pc817 or the 4n35 so the way this works if you want 12 volts you should use a 11 volt zener diode so when there is about 12 volts at the output so the zener diode will conduct the source of some a small voltage drop across the internal infrared LED of the copra. So when current find its path through the zener diode through the LED to ground, the LED will turn on and this will turn on the internal transistor of the copra, which if you follow the current path, it will provide a base bias for the feedback transistor. So the transistor will turn on and this will immediately turn off the switching MOSFET since it will shunt its gates to the negative rail. So the source has current sensing resistor is 0.22 ohms, so when about 3 amperes goes through, there will be a sufficient voltage drop across the this node and the transistor will turn on and so it will disconnect the MOSFET. So this will limit the duty cycle. So the source has another diode at the input which will be at least it should be in the range of 12 to 15 volts. So what this does is that it protects the gate of the MOSFET from over voltage since more than 20 volts across the gate and source of the MOSFET can cause the MOSFET to blow up. So that's all about this switch mode power supply. It can be configured for custom outputs by changing the value of the zener diode or using a precision reference I see such as the TL431. So don't forget to like this video, comment, and most importantly, subscribe for more amazing tutorials and projects. Have a nice time.